plan at the Capitol Center. Finally, at the completion of full revamping of Little Benny and the Masters, the members were Benny on trumpet and lead rap, Godfather and Maki Owens on keyboard, Elmo on congas, CJ, formerly of Ridge and the Boys, and CJ's Uptown crew on saxophone, Shorty Dud on drums, Vincent Tab on bass guitar, David Green, formerly of Rare Essence, on the rotor tom, and me on lead guitar. Eventually, Vincent left the group as well as Shorty Dud, who went to play with Rare Essence. Gary Smith came in as the new bass player and Little Mike on the drums. In 1987, the Gogo community had been celebrating and rallying around a video that had been released of a show that was entitled Gogo Live at the Capitol Center. Gogo bands performing at the Capitol Center were not anything new. Many bands played at back-to-school boogie type of events with hip-hop and national R&B acts. But Gogo Live at the Capitol Center was the very first time that a show had taken place at this venue that consisted of nothing but Gogo bands. Before then, the only venues that hosted such large Gogo events of this magnitude were places such as the Washington Coliseum and RFK Stadium, where the Washington Redskins played. Having such an event of that magnitude at the Capitol Center actually placed a new type of significance towards Gogo music. This was considered a national stage to play on. The bands that performed on that card were Chuck Brown and the Soul Searchers, Rare Essence, Experience Unlimited, Little Benny and the Masters, Hot Cold Sweat, Junkyard Band, Gogo Lorenzo, to include a special performance by DC Scorpio, who performed during Chuck Brown's set. By the time 1988 rolled around, and with the success of the Gogo Live at the Capitol Center event, G Street Express were already gearing up and preparing for a second event, Gogo Live 2 at the Capitol Center. Of course, since I was now a member of Little Benny and the Masters, this brought extreme excitement to me. It immediately took me back to the days when I used to go see bands playing there, and now there I was getting ready to perform there myself. The bands that were selected this go-round were Chuck Brown and the Soul Searchers, Rare Essence, who had been making noise in the streets with songs such as Locket, as well as a rapper who went by the name of Stinky Dink, Experience Unlimited, who had just come back home from touring, promoting their national hit single, The Butt, Little Benny and the Masters, Junkyard Band, who were super hot in the streets with the song Hee Haw, Pleasure, the all-female go-go band, and DJ Cool, who had been making noise with the hot single called The Music Ain't Loud Enough. This also served as a moment and opportunity for Lil Benny to solidify to a large audience at one time that he indeed had not fallen off. Due to the fact that he ended up having to revamp his entire band, one of his main goals was to rebuild and strengthen the band's street ranking. So in essence... Our particular performance for the event, we themed the Guess Who's Back performance of the show. Just like he solidified his position in the ranks during the first Gogo Live, especially with his song Cat in the Hat, the mentality was that this go round we would have to do the same thing. We were reintroducing ourselves to the Gogo community while competing with heavyweights on the same show. This meant that every aspect of our performance of the show would have to not only be 100% on par, but just as equal to the energy that was given at the first show, if not even better. The songs that Benny selected for us to play were I'm King, Ladies of the 80s, and Mercedes, all of which were released just prior to my joining the band. For the attire we were going to wear, Benny brought in a tailor, and we were all measured and fitted for custom-made all-white polo jumpsuits. Benny's particular jumpsuit also included a long white coat that displayed a large polo symbol on the back. For choreography, we went right back to the same place where Benny had gone to have his set choreographed for the first Go-Go Live event, which were the Bryn Car Dancers. We worked on steps choreographed by them that would be designed to each song that was listed for us to play. Needless to say, by the night of this event, we were more than ready. Some of us arrived through the stage entrance at the Capitol Center early on the day of the event 
and just relaxed in our designated dressing room until the rest of the band arrived. The entire time, I was not just relaxing. I was also smelling the roses and pinching myself at the reality that there I was about to play in what we considered the most significant venue in the region. When I was growing up, this was the place that I had come to for countless concerts, bullets, basketball games, and even the ice capade. Not to mention that it was also the main event for high school graduation ceremonies. Playing on top of a Slick Rick song entitled Hey Young World, we opened our set vamping the beat, choreographically stepping onto the stage while chanting over and over again, guess who's back? By the end of the night, we successfully accomplished what we set out to do, informed the crowd that yes, indeed, Little Benny and the Masses were back. Although this particular show was not released on video as the first one had been, segments of it did make it on a popular cable music video channel called The Box. Our performance of the song I'm King was the segment of our set that was showcased on it. <laughs> 